everybody, Liz Larson here, Transform One Idea and the Cogno Movement Systems. And I wanted to um, talk to you about something that I have been hearing again and again, not just in my practice, but it, you know, just in my daily life. Friends, family, uh, you know, just people I'm talking to. And, and that's about getting back to normal. People are saying, how do we get back to normal? Or a bigger, the bigger question is, how do I start to feel normal again? Because people just don't feel good. They don't feel normal. They feel like their nervous systems are out of control, which is true. <coughs> Excuse me. So because I've had this conversation so many times recently, I thought it might make a lot of sense to just share it with you. Some real pa practical tips some ideas about what's really going on and what you can do about it. So the first thing is that we have to get our nervous system under control. Most people are feeling anxious. They're describing themselves as having anxiety or depression. And what they really mean is they're having these bouts of not being able to get their nervous system, their mind, their cycling thoughts, their emotions under control. People are having crying jags or staying in house and not wanting to go out. Some people are actually starting to have a form of agoraphobia where they don't want to go out of their house because of what might happen in terms of getting sick or other craziness on the planet. And none of that feels very good in the body. So the first thing we have to do is talk about some practical ways to get our nervous system under control, under our control back under our control because right now our nervous systems are a little under control of social media, of the news, and actually of each other because we're sharing posts. We're talking about, oh, did you hear what happened today? Oh, did you hear what happened today? And it's usually something crazy. And we've been using that word, you know, usually it's a little hyperbole. We're exaggerating, but it's not anymore. Everything that has happened to us feels crazy. So for example, I was out to dinner with my friend the other night and we're in our little town, quiet little town, outdoor dining, beautiful, and someone was throwing fish at people. Yeah, you heard me, fish, actual fish, throwing them at diners. And we were one of those people, thank goodness it didn't hit us, but of all the strangeness on the planet. So that was kind of funny, com comedic relief, but it was, you know, crazy. So there's so many things going on and our nervous systems are simply reacting, reacting, reacting to all of it. So the first thing we can do, the first practical thing we can do is start to shift our perspective and shift our focus. Get out of the chaos. So some of you are hearing my voice and I'm saying get out of the chaos and your nervous system just reacted. Feel yourself. Are you getting hot or even getting a little bit angry? because you're feeling like the chaos is happening to you and that you can't get out of it. All of these things are bigger than you and, and you can't take, do anything for it, like the a presidency, for example. This is a huge polarizing force. And we've got people on, on the extremes more than we ever have before. People wanting to um, and doing, actually deleting their friends from their lives who don't agree with them politically. This is not something we normally do. It's due to these extremes, the polarization, the chaos that we've start to, started to become very accustomed to. So we have to actually be aware for one. Awareness is such a big thing. There's so many things that we do every day, all day, that are just habits. And sadly, this has become one of them, the extremes. So what I'm talking about now is, is shifting away from extremes, shifting away from the chaos, simply shifting our attention. So if anybody has watched the um, Social Dilemma on Netflix, I, I really recommend it. They really break it down step by step about how our social media networks are really trying and succeeding very well to get our attention. The more hours that our eyes are on our social media, 
the longer we can be advertised to or our thinking can be shifted. So we're being drawn back and back and back to social media to alarmist posts. And at first it's kind of fun. It's very exciting to our nervous system. Our nervous system gets really energized by these outrageous claims and things that are going on. And then we start to get addicted to it because we're on a little bit of a high. We're on an adrenaline high. We're mad at this one. We're mad at that one. How can they think this? And how could they think that? The thing to understand, and the social dilemma makes it really clear, that each side is being fed exactly what they need to be fed to keep their nervous system on fire. Now, I can feel some of your nervous systems right now getting jacked up. How dare she say that what I'm listening to is not the truth? Well, in my work, when I listen, and that's to social media or to a person in my client, I'm listening for the language patterns. I'm listening for things that are very extreme. They always do this, they never do that. I'm listening for things that are minimalized, things that maybe a person did, but, but it wasn't so bad, right? Nominalizations. I'm listening for things that are not said, deleted, and I listen to the news the same way. If we listen to most of what we're being fed or look at it, even in the paper, You'll see a very polarizing uh, title. You'll see some information in the middle and that maybe at the bottom or at the end of a newscast, you'll hear three sentences of what's actually going on. The truth is most of the time those things are very inflamed when they're, when they're presenting them. But the truth is they're either not true at all, it's someone's supposition, it's something someone heard, or it's nothing at all. If you're not listening with discernment, you will take that headline and repeat it again and again. You'll tell people, oh, I heard so-and-so did this. I heard this about this party. I heard that about that party. When the truth is, if you had read down to the very bottom and vetted the source, which none of us do, we would find that that post was likely a whole lot of nothing. So that's one way we can do it. Another way that we can get our nervous systems under control is stop looking at it. Because we're being fed so many extremes right now, take a diet from media, from Facebook, from YouTube, well, YouTube if you're watching fun stuff, from TV news, you know, watch Hocus Pocus, it's December, watch, or it's October, watch something fun, Watch Mary Poppins, but remove yourself from the extremes. What you'll find will happen, and do it as an experiment if you don't believe me, you'll find that your nervous system starts to settle back to a real normal, where you can take a moment and pet your dog and really love and enjoy them. You could really have a conversation with your spouse over dinner that maybe doesn't include crazy or politics maybe talks about a really interesting idea. When was the last time you got together with a friend and talked about an idea that didn't have something to do with politics or the plague or something else that's so extreme? These things actually feel so good to us when we're back in a normal state, when our fight or flight has been removed. So let's talk about our fight or flight. Why do I keep saying that? because our nervous systems get in this mode of there's a lion on my tail and I need to run. So it removes, guess what? All the energy and blood from our frontal lobe so that our critical thinking goes away, sends it all to our muscles to run. Well, now that lion on our tail is no longer a lion or a bear ready to eat us. Now it's the headline of a post. Now it's the headline of a newspaper. Now it's the conversation of our friends. So I've heard the argument a lot lately. Well, that person believes something that basically violates my fundamental rights or beliefs. So let's talk about that. Let's take the extreme out of that. Here's one big way that we get back to normal with our friends and our family and people in general is we stop looking at them 
as a political party, as a political view, and we start looking at them again as real people, starting to look at their beings. If you're hearing my voice today, you know what I mean, look at their being. Are they a person that in their life, in general, in their business, in their work and in their family, do they have a high value on integrity? Are they a person of integrity? Are they a person who treats their family well, their customers well? Are they a person who really does believe in fairness and actually treats people fairly in their lives? If the answer is yes, then they're a person of value. If the answer is no, I mean, you need to delete that friend a long time ago. But if the answer is yes, look at that person and consider that maybe they want the exact the same thing as you in your life, the exact same thing. So you want to be safe in your home. You want to have enough food. You want to be able to care for your family. You want to be healthy. You want it for yourself and you want it for your family. And so do they. Where they might differ is how to get there specifically. But as a nation, we've mostly figured that out. So start looking back at the beings, at the people. Stop making them an extreme headline because unfortunately, that's what we've been doing with each other. And we're losing some of the most sacred relationships in our lives over the how question, how do we get there? How do we get there as a whole? And we each have different perspectives. We all know that we don't look through the same eyes. We see things differently. And also as a social dilemma so eloquently pointed out, we're being fed news that's extreme to keep us looking in one direction, which means we're not looking in all directions. We can't see 360 degrees. If we can get our nervous systems back down to what I call neutral, a place where we're no longer in fight or flight, we really are fully in ourselves, in our bodies, and we can see 360 degrees. And we can allow people to just be as they are, knowing that they don't necessarily have anything to do with us. Just let them be and let us be neutral. We can see what we need to do to make our lives a little better. One of those things and one of the biggest things is, and also, by the way, a thing that settles your nervous system is to be of service. I don't mean the kind of slave of service where you're running around doing everything for everyone. What I mean is if you feel that there's someone who's treated unjustly in your community, help them, help that community. Go read where children need to be read to, where they aren't being read to, in centers for um, domestic violence, in places where, in homeless shelters. If you're a professional, Donate clothes to people who need that to get into professional work. Mentor them. If you're a person who none of that applies to and you have an elderly person in your neighborhood who really shouldn't be going to the store, go pick up their groceries. Go sweep their front stoop. Anything you can do to actually activate and open your heart centers is going to help you get back to normal and feel normal and remember what's real. It's just people. It's not these extreme things that are going on in our lives or headlines. It's the people who live in our houses, near our houses, in our neighborhoods and in our towns. Find a way to actually serve. And when you do that, your nervous system comes back to neutral, comes back to normal. And all the chaos tends to fade away in that moment. Because what difference does it make what's happening half of it across the country if your neighbor is hungry or if they need a ride to the doctor or if they just need someone to sit and talk with them? This is one of those ways, one of those things that actually brings your nervous system back into harmony now, right now. You're feeling anxiety, you're feeling stressed out, you're feeling depressed, go sweep someone's stoop. Go help someone to their car with their groceries. Go do something that is actually of service. Maybe you're an animal person. Go volunteer at a shelter. Do something right now to get your nervous system back into harmony. And you'll immediately feel better. My number one prescription that I give to people in my office is go on a news diet. 
just four days. Even if you don't think you have a problem, but you're feeling nervous, you're feeling out of control, you're feeling chaotic, take four days and remove yourself completely from social media and news of any kind at all. Ask the people in your lives just not to talk about it for now that you're taking a news diet, you're taking some time for yourself. This will work better than any meditation you could ever do. Just remove yourself and start to notice. Write it down. How does my system feel? At the end of the four days, you might start to forget that all that's going on in the world. The world might look brand new to you. You might move back into what I call neutrality, where you have the ability to see everything, the truth of it all. So four days, just four days is all I'm asking. Do it as an experiment and see what happens. The other thing is that in my office, we use my favorite tool for getting down to neutrality and that's a, a Cogno Movement system. It's cognomovement.com. And it's one of many things you can do, but I'll tell you why this one's my favorite. It's that it happens right now. I'm a person who really is pretty impatient and doesn't want to wait around. And I learned early on in this whole crazy time that I would get distracted and be upset for no reason and I couldn't figure out why. Well, with Cogno Movement, we know that that's really an option. Suffering is optional in every situation. If you can just stop the way the body feels, the mind will follow. Right now, the mind will follow and stop the cycling thoughts and stop the feeling of anxiousness. So what we do is we actually hold on to that feeling. We don't try to push it away. We don't try to deny that we have it. We don't even try to change our minds. In fact, we really don't try to change our minds. What we do is hold on to that feeling, focus on it, and then do this system, which is a cross-body system. It activates the left and the right hemispheres. It moves our eyes through the levels of emotions. In the low position, we're in connection with the body. How do we feel? That angsty feeling really isn't here, it's here. Some, for some of us in our throats, for some of us in our belly, but it's in our bodies, it's affecting our bodies. So we focus on that. Then we move the eyes through a place of neutrality. Think about it, if you're daydreaming, you're like this. Right, right about here, neutrality. And then we move into inspiration and ideas. So along with many other things, eye movements that we do in about five to 10 minutes, that feeling in the body is just gone. It's neutralized. And from that point, nervous system settles and you start to get you back. Now here's the really fun thing about that. When you're in a state of chaos and anxiety and fear and your limb, limbic system is turned up to high, your awareness, your consciousness, your real ability to have a, this open awareness is limited. You are shut right down into the lower vibrations, down into shame and fear and desire and guilt and all those things that really hold your consciousness, your logical mind even, your higher self down. You don't have a, the availability of those things when you're in that state. So if you wanna be at your highest state of consciousness, if you're interested in elevating your consciousness, everything you can do to turn off that fight or flight system and return back to neutrality in a real way not just a momentary way, but in a real way, are things that'll help you awaken your consciousness. Be more aware. So what does that mean? What it really means is how your life plays out. When your awareness is open and turned on and elevated, things just kind of work out for you. Also, your relationships get better because now you're seeing people for who they really are, not just the behaviors that you've judged are inappropriate or wrong or the way they believe is wrong. You're just seeing them for who they are. It's so much nicer and people tend to respond to that. So your life just works better. Your relationships work better um, in terms of manifesting things. 
when you're in fear, you're manifesting fear. We just project out of ourselves what's happening in our physical and emotional bodies. And remember I talked about this. Those things are not necessarily even real. You just feel that way. And that's what we're projecting out there. So makes perfect sense. It's what you get back. So when you're clear of these emotional patterns of the chaos, when you're feeling neutral, when you just feel neutral in your body and in your mind, now you can lean into things that feel great, even in this time of chaos. The people who are taking this kind of device and doing it for themselves are feeling good. They're actually thriving during this time. It's really possible. But the trick is to pull yourself out of the chaos, to shift your perspective and be in a state where um, you're at neutral and able to really see what's happening and really take care of what's going on just in your local vicinity because that's all you really have control over. So this is Liz Larson with Transform One Idea and Cognomovement.com. And if you wanna know more about my favorite way to get to neutrality, go to Cognomovement.com. Otherwise, just take a break from the media, all of it, and see what happens. The other thing is get out there and be of service. Really help someone and see how you feel. Just notice yourself. Notice when things are extreme. Don't pay attention to those. Notice when things are being minimalized way too much. Maybe delete that. Just take the stuff in the middle or don't take it at all and just live your life. So guys, I hope that everyone starts to feel better very soon. It's very, very possible. For each and every one of us we just need to take control of what we're doing what we're seeing what we're saying and what we're thinking about and we can get back to normal in fact we can get back to better than normal if you need some help with that please reach out to me or bill mckenna at the cognomovement.com website actually we have all kinds of practitioners there all over the world so you can reach out to any one of us or just take some of the simple advice we'll see you guys all again really soon bye